Welcome to the YetiRadio.com. The Yeti. The Yeti. The Yeti. The Yeti Radio. Powered by DavidLeeImaging.com. David Lee Imaging and the Title Town Music Archive. And the Live 365 app. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the YetiRadio.com, live on YouTube, Twitch, Live 365, and about 10 other platforms. Check them out on the YetiRadio.com. Live in studio tonight, we've got Mr. Dave Stone and Mr. Tommy Gibbons, the newest guitarist added to Menace Mary, live in studio. Welcome, gentlemen. That's me. He said my name. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thanks for... Uh, Thanks to Tommy for hitting me up and uh, wanting to bring you guys in here, because uh, this is this is really cool. Oh, I like got the hookup, don't I? Jeez, <laughs> oh, all the time. Well, I, I knew uh, next week was coming up, and I knew you were pushing for that because that's going to be your first show with the band. Yep, yep. April fourth and fifth uh, uh, at the Roadhouse for Bike Week, Cape Creek Bike Week. Oh, awesome! Yep, we uh, we go out at night. We've got an opening band open it up for us at eight o'clock on both nights. One night is uh, Thursday night's what Grudgemeyer, mm -hmm. and the other one's a great band, a little girl not so little anymore for all the better, and they're just killing it. So they opened for us last time up there, and they had a hell of a crowd. That their crowd was at the front of the stage the whole night. It was awesome. So on uh, Friday is all the better, and of course Grudgemeyer, that guy just rips it. I don't know if you know Alan. He just great singer band is awesome so i'm looking forward to playing with them again awesome in fact, i produced both those bands too which is cool <laughs> yeah that's sick yeah they kept on telling me i need to talk to this tommy guy right <laughs> absolutely that's biggest, definitely the guy you want to talk biggest to. mistake of his life yeah <laughs> yeah not yet <laughs> maybe yours for me you know <laughs> but uh no i was uh pretty cool how we did get you know introduced to each other absolutely um so uh Okay, Tommy, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. Oh, no. We're just going to come out swinging, huh? We're just going to come out swinging and get this over with. Uh, last time you were here, I oh. believe you said you ain't doing this no more. <laughs> so who twisted your arm off and beat you over the head with it? Was, it was, well, that, well, you know what? And it's funny you said that because you're right. Absolutely. Last time I was on any kind of radio platform or any thing like that i did use the term yeah no I'm, I'm done don't get your hopes up i think it's actually exactly what i said but you know but that's the thing there was no beating over the head there was no force it just everything happened naturally and that's what made me think this is this is the right project for me to be a part of because you know it's a combination of a lot of things one you know seeing them perform i was like oh wow there's you know this is really cool and i can't remember the last time i actually like just like had fun doing music you know, it's always been work, which it is. It's it is a work. It's a job. It's you know, but it's a job that you should love doing. And Absolutely. So, you know, so, with that being said, I just felt like the time was right. And, you know, they're, you know, top notch musicians, top notch guys. Oh. And I want to see you don't <laughs> do, don't get too comfortable. <laughs> oh, I'm getting there. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it just felt right. And sometimes you got to go with your gut. And Absolutely, my, and my guy no. was saying like this. This just feels right. Well, everything so, everybody's ever told me in here in an interview is that's what they look for. They look for that moment when you sit down and you write the song start to finish like that, right? And or when you meet the right people. Exactly, and I'm happy to eat crow and say <laughs> yes, I am officially back, and I'm, I'm I'm stoked, and I'm happy that it's with Menace Mary. I'm happy it's with these guys. And I can't wait to really just to start getting out there. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to see you play again. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a tough act to be on the other side of the stage. From, <laughs> you know, he's up there doing the hair. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you don't, you don't have like, enough hair. <laughs> what am I going to do? I got big ears. What am I going to do? You know, if I got, I'll put a wig on. It yeah, I was going to say, off. get a wig. I'll never live that one out, you know, so. No, it's... Uh, I'm real excited, and uh, this band had a turn of events. When I say events, some were forced by me. Others were just the vision I had, and some was just luck. Okay. I mean, I, I look at, uh, you know, one, everybody that I play with in this band, when I got the band together, was one of the great musicians, 
but they could be the best in the world if they had that attitude. I'm done. I don't want to put up with it. You know, so. Uh, so then why, why are we? No, <laughs> you know, well, one thing is, as you can tell, we literally mess with each other nonstop. We, we're laughing, we're giggling, we're having a good time, but. Uh, you know, uh, how Tommy came into picture, that was pure luck. He happened to produce, what, uh, Grudge Meyer. And all the better. Both, both bands. And, both bands. Yep. So, yeah, he came up and, uh, you know, came to see them play and actually jumped on stage with, oh, with yeah, yeah. Grudge Meyer. I'm like, holy crap, he can play. And he wings the hair everywhere. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then we just start, we, we had been talking for a few weeks before that because I have this monster you'll you'll hear about the guitar rigs uh i'm bringing back the wall the marshall stacks all the way across and then of course you want to say anything about um you know we got i i've been with crunch amps for a very long time and love those guys so we're definitely going to be working on adding some crunch to the wall yeah not, no disrespect to the marshals yeah i yeah. think they're great but um our our connection started because of the fractal yeah axe effects preamps yeah. Uh, I'm not too <laughs> sure how many people have heard of a fractal. Same unit I have that he has is the same one at Metallica, Journey, Avenged Sevenfold. It's all the ones they use uh, live, but I got to tell you, it's a monster. <laughs> you know, if you want to say it's got a, it's a, a, a modeler and say you want a tube screamer distortion pedal, it's in there. The one I grew up with had two knobs and a button. <laughs> this thing you open up, it's got five pages of different ways to change the transistors and it. it's just it's out of control and so i'm I, i'd heard that he had a fractal through the guys at grudge Meyer. so i've been talking to him for a couple of weeks i'm like yeah this is a really nice guy and he came up there and he heard we you know literally had a uh, spinal tap moment and lost our uh, other guitar player about four days before the gig i had to go through and learn the solos to eight songs and i think i had to learn one or two new songs the night of the, our first gig and of course I'm up there by myself, first time in 32 years. I think it was 91 or 92. Right. Playing, I about shit myself lifeless up there, you know. <laughs> so, but we went over well. Everybody liked it. Uh, awesome. I, I mean, it. They really liked it, and so uh, here we are. And I apparently impressed this guy enough. And as he confessed the other day, I I thought it was the band, but it was actually our singer. So, uh, oh man, yeah, no, Anthony's Anthony's great. Oh yeah, like to the range, you know, it's is no Anthony Anthony's sick. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, you hear hear him sing Lincoln Park or Chris Cornell or Good Allison God, Chains, Allison Metallica. Chains, Metallica. He just so, I mean, really, he can just mimic and do. Yeah, you know, of course, we're doing covers right now, which. Uh, if you want, uh, you want to elaborate on how we're going to go about this plan, or you know how I saw the vision of the band. Who knows? Well, it's it's a good it's a good plan. You know, use the covers to develop a fan base, develop a following, because these are songs that people recognize. You know, absolutely. But, but, but in my opinion, it also puts more pressure on us because it's songs that people recognize. You know, with originals, I feel like I am. You know, no one's going to really know if I mess it up. Right. But with covers, it's like. Oh shoot! These people like, actually know these songs. So if I if I yeah. screw it up, they're gonna know. But um, I love you know it's a cool plan. I think you know develop using the covers to, to develop a fan base is great. And then you know later down the road, you know I I at least I know I want to introduce some originals. I think this band would be oh absolutely sick with with doing some originals. So you know it, you know you got you got to follow us and you got to you got you got to check it out. You got to stay tuned because you never yeah. know. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so where, where'd you come up with Menace Mary? Actually, I kind of want to know too. Uh, so, uh, Menace Mary. Whoa. Okay. You playing just, a band? Just checking. Uh, <laughs> we and I run a studio too. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to go back. I'm the oldest member of the band. You know, when I walked off stage, my band was Circus. Uh, if you're from here and you're from the 80s, which a lot of the people I still know that are still playing out today... Remember my band from back then, Rip and Terror, Surgical Steel, Icon, Schoolboy, all these guys. We're all kind of like the in thing back in the 80s. So here I am trying to name the band. I'm thinking Wings of Fury and Death from Above, you know, something like that, you know, because I'm in the 80s. I thought, you know what? I really don't know what's cool now, right? So how old's Anthony? Like 30? 
I don't, I don't know. I think much. Anthony's. I don't even know the I guy's think, last I think name, Anthony's so. 31 years old. <laughs> You're asking me uh, Victor Drummer is 25. Uh, Scott, our bass player, he came from Larry. He's he's the only one that's in the 50s with me, right? And so, uh, you know, Anthony was letting him do his creative thing. He was coming up with all these different names, and he came up with a bunch of them. One that I thought was hilarious that I wanted to name the band, but I thought, yeah, it'd be kind of hard to play out with a name of a band called Clitty Litter and take it serious. So, <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. I just giggle every time. I couldn't imagine, you know. That uh, that band name keeps popping up for some reason yeah, all around the yeah, everywhere. Yeah, Clitty Litter. <laughs> so he kept on coming through these names, and he said he he came up on the, on Minus Mary, and I if I really wasn't digging it, but was like, you know what? What do I know? What do I know? You know, and uh, started listening. You know, saying the name, talking to people more about. It, but the way it was endearing to me was uh, my mother, five foot tall Croatian woman pistol and she was a she was a she was a pistol and she was also pretty rowdy so it was kind of a joke that my mom's name is mary and she was a menace when i told my aunt and uncle that they about died laughing my mother <laughs> passed away about six years ago so it's kind of to me a little bit more endearing but you know i like the role on it and it does have some meaning but it just happened by chance you know that's good like it when it happens by chance because yeah. then you know it means mean a little more in the end yeah I, I i think well when he joined a band i was thinking about seeing if the like wing chug was available but no. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we can we can we call it can we call it i mean everyone already says i look like herman lee so <laughs> well instead of dragon force we'll change the name to force dragon you look like betty hana's kid the dj though. okay you do okay. Come on. You dragon do. ball t yeah. <laughs> hey, rest in peace akira toriyama uh, for sure uh <laughs> so uh what made you decide to start up a, another band after what did you say 32 years uh well uh i kept all my esps which is a great story behind those too uh but uh i had i always had a guitar the guitars in the house never got rid of those but back in a day i was known with also jim keeler of surgical steel of having a wall of random lamps the stacks I'd sold all that stuff, and all I had was this practice amp, and I have this boy now who's 24 years old. He's a, a intelligence officer in the Navy, and he was there, you know, he was at the house, and I got pictures of two years old. I'm handing him a guitar to play. He didn't want nothing to do with it. Around 15, he said, Dad, I want to play guitar. I'm like, right on. So I went in there and got him set up, and I'm handing him these ESPs, which I never really thought of what they were worth 30, 40 years later. But, uh, yeah, you learn to play on a really collectible ESP kamikaze. I think it's the number 12th one ever made. Uh, every, wow. We've all heard of George Lynch. And yeah. I got the authenticity and everything like that. Huh? But uh, he was playing. And see, when I was going through the glam stage, it was like, you know, White Snake. You can play like George Lynch and, uh, uh, what's his say, John Sykes from White, uh, White Snake. And that's what I was I was geared toward. Metallica back then, it was like, eh, you know, Megadeth, eh, you know, that was like, that's easy stuff. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so he was in there jamming all that stuff, and he uh, went into the military. So I had those guitars, and I'm sitting there, and I go, I'm just going to make an ego room, hang them on the wall. I did that. I thought, you know what? I'm going to start playing. And then I started playing, and that was a couple years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. And then I started buying stacks, and then I started to build the rig, and I tried to build this monster rig, and then I saw this vision. I'm like, started seeing some of the bands out there, and I thought, I could do this, you know, and you know, confidence and the ego in there. You know, I I don't want to say it out loud because it sounds like a dick, but I I thought I could do this, and I think I could do it a little bit better. But I got a different plan. My plan isn't playing all originals for the three people that's my girlfriend and all that stuff and going up there and jumping on stage with no sound check and then go. I wanted to have a show. I wanted to build a following, at least the best I could. And so I started working on that Megadeth, that Metallica, that Pantera, which, wow, the stuff I thought was easy, boy, was I wrong. It's this right hand, you know? So started hammering on that and then I started putting the band together and started morphed into it to where we are today with him, yeah. 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 You're in here. You got what do you got to say? Come on. You're bigger in music than I ever was. I took some time off too though, bro. Like you know, but you know, it's been it's been good because like, you know, 
I'm obviously, you know, you guys know I have, I have the studio, so it's really cool to work with a bunch of bands. But now to like work with bands, and now I'm in one again. So that's like, it's a double whammy there. Sick. Oh yeah. Sick. Well, and I've said it once. I've said it a dozen times. You know, I, it would take me 15 years at 110 percent every day working on music and learning music and learning recording and all that to be where he is. <laughs> Right? And right. he came and came into the band, that just jumped us fifteen years ahead. And the stuff this guy's writes and my singer, I'm I'm excited. But first we'll get our following. Absolutely. You know. Great game plan. So uh Metallica, uh Megadeth, uh Pantera, anybody else? Or Vol- who else are you Vol- covering? Beats. Volbeat, Volbeat. Alice okay. in Chains, Pearl Jam, Alice Lincoln Chains, Park, Park, Slipknot. Slipknot. I could not believe how well that went over. Why is that so shocking? Because they're such a popular band. Like, right? It is, but like, I mean, you know, we're, we're playing out, and I'm I'm looking out in the crowd, and I'm thinking, well, maybe, you know, when Slipknot was really kicking was 20 years ago when that, that we're playing Duality by Slipknot. I okay. think we're going to do Psychosocial next. Spoilers, bro. Yeah. Spoilers. But, <laughs> but, you know, when I looked out there and we got a video from somebody in the audience recording our singer play, or singing the song and the crowd is actually louder than the, uh, than it's Anthony is singing the song. So. Wow. Yeah, I was, I was blown away, you know. Well, that means you're doing something right. Absolutely. If they're joining you and being louder than you, and you're the one with the amps and the, yeah. well, I could fix that real quick. I go, I got, absolutely, I got, I got four Marshall stacks if I want to. I can, I can, I could ruin a lot of fertility problems out there. Make a lot of right? fertility problems out in the audience. But yeah. So, uh, what um, could obviously George Lynch? But who were some of your your um, when you were growing up? Well, you know, because we're in the same age bracket. So, so you know, got to realize I came up at that time when we had you know Phoenix was a springboard. We had a lot of big artists living here. It wasn't just Dave Mustang uh, and all these others. Sorry, my allergies. I'm trying to talk, but uh, you had Rob Halford out here, and I met. I know you haven't. You might want to look up Jim Keeler and Surgical Steel. He's a lifelong good friend of mine. But I remember 19 years old meeting him, and they were playing these kegger desert parties. It'd be like 80 kegs, and they'd take a flatbed out there, and they had all the stacks and all that stuff going, and Rob Halford would jump on stage with them. <laughs> Holy crap. And they're doing Judas Priest, and it's like you were in concert. It was powerful. It was incredible. And, of course, Jeff Martin, the lead singer is of Surgical Steel, amazing singer who went on to sing with uh racer x and of course he's a phenomenal drummer played with badlands so that was my first influence is seeing that so i wanted to play judas priest so i was playing judas priest uh and then that guy george lynch came out mm-hmm. and i was like holy crap who is this guy and that's how i end up with randall's because george had randall's <laughs> and uh he had that and that's the first time i ever heard of esp guitars and i'll never forget nobody had esp guitars here in phoenix and I was out in L.A., and I went to the Guitar Center, which is, that's the original one, I think, that was there. And I went, hey, do you have ESPs? And they go, no, this place called, I think it was Waldo's across the street. And I walked in there. There it was hanging on the wall, that kamikaze. And it was the first run. They had the first run of 75, and it was part of that first run. And uh, bought it right there, 2600 bucks, I think it was back then, which was a lot. Wow. So what's it, it worth now? You know, uh, when I got it insured, I insured it for about forty one, forty two thousand because I was going out. Some guy put it out there. A couple guys were putting out these kamikazes for forty and forty five thousand. I'm like, I would never pay that for the guitar, but if that's what it's freaking worth, I'm going to insure it for that. Because I'll tell you, I've had that guitar since I don't know eighty five, eighty six, eighty seven, something like that around there. And so, uh, you know, it means a lot to me. It's irreplaceable. It'll never be sold. But if I got forty grand for my insurance, and that helped me cry a little bit better on that pillow. But yeah. I don't know what it's worth now. It, you know, it's such a low number. Uh, but then the other one, the other ESP I got is one where ESP asked me if I wanted my own model of it. And I met the president of ESP when uh, Lynch Mob was recording their pre-production for their first album, 
and you know the the guy that's producing them and stuff is a good friend who was also the manager of surgical steel invited me over and of course almost died sitting there in the room and george wasn't there yet and you know so i got to talk with some of the guys and had my kamikaze there for him to sign and all that good stuff and then the, the president from esp met him matt he's still the president today and he said hey would you like one of your own i go absolutely and so he made me a the same version but it's called the anolia gay it's the american version of the kamikaze and it's the number one main i only think they did like 50 of them but i have those two guitars and i never give away they'll get handed to my kids so absolutely cool experience definitely um so uh you got any pre-show rituals (sighs) i wouldn't say ritual for me i just get really really quiet like just i can't like I, i guess it's just like moments to just collect my thoughts last minute Maybe going over something in my head last minute, but I, 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 for me, I definitely wouldn't say rituals. Not, not for me, anyways. Oh, there ain't no ritual. Nothing other than the fact I'm stretching my fingers out. I'm trying to find hot water and stick my <laughs> forearms in it. So it's almost like you have to play for two hours to get your arms, you know, this loose. So I, that's all I do is I stretch, try to get away from people, kind of center myself. Uh, a friend of mine, Bobby, uh, God, is it cystic? He's he's used to play with Drop Diesel. He gave me some some hints. He goes, Dave, just put your metronome on your car at 120 clicks. And listen to it on the way to gig. And he and he told me that when I was going over to record with him because I had the worst timing in the world. Well, yeah, uh, no, I wouldn't say worst. Wait till I blow the intro solo to cemetery gates where i come in right, 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 right. but uh <laughs> no he told me he, uh, and you know what i was driving over to his house to do the recordings and stuff and uh yeah that 120 i came in I'm like wow okay it kind of sets your internal clock so other than that nice other than that it's just old guy trying to get the stiffness out of his hand so he can play fast that's all okay um let's see what uh okay you played the roadhouse in january right january 20 or yeah 24th 25th yeah Holy crap was that really in january yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the roadhouse again next next week anything else after that oh good god the uh rock bar we rock bar yeah 40 uh, 4 uh 420 we're playing a rock bar in old town scottsdale okay uh we got the 44 in there we got starlight we've got blues uh yeah we we just started we played that first show and it was like i couldn't get anybody to talk to me before that we play that first show now the phone's ringing people are asking for us you know only only challenge i have is you know i like pairing up with another band so they go on and we're not moving drums we're not you know we're not you know they could play through my rig they could play through our bass but you know usually they bring their own stuff but it's the i want a seamless transfer with the band you know, so that we have a good sound check. I mean, we are a product from the first note of that intro band all the way to the end when we finish. And I just, I hate it when bands don't get sound checks. Right. You know, Absolutely. Big thing to me. Yeah. You got to sound good while you're up there because that's why people are there. Well, I feel that's where a lot of bands get robbed in town on that original scene. I've seen bands that were, I hear them, I'm like, oh my God, the sound is horrible. And I go see them at another place and they get a good sound check and they're amazing. And I just, the music we're playing, we can't mess around. Right. I mean, uh, Metallica's pretty easy because it's straight straight ahead, but we're doing full beat. We're doing, what Slip is not, it? Allison Chains. Avenged right. Sevenfold. Avenged Sevenfold. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's all this Crazy. different textures and different, you know, and if, if our sound isn't on, it just sounds like a garage band out in their garage. Right. Can't have that. No. Definitely not. So, you know, because it's... Um, the scene is good. The scene is loose, but I can I think it's also critical at times when you have that uh, lack of uh, fine-tuned sound. I think another problem too is one thing I do like about the way he handles like these shows is he treats them like an event. I feel like and I think we had this conversation last time. I think. I feel like if bands focused more on making each show, like, treating it like an event, like, you have to be here. 
Right. Instead of just, oh, it's another Friday night. It's another, it's another gig. Night. It's another gig. No, you got to treat it like, like it's an event, you know? And I feel like that's kind of what, like, he's really good at, you know, with the, with the you know, like, I'll help out, too, with, like, some of the flyers and, like, the promo videos. We make it like, oh, you got to come out to this, you know? You know, promotion's key, like, you know, and it's so easy to do now with social media. Like, it's, well, Absolutely. It's, it's really easy. You're not having to, I, I think bands should still go out and fly, but you're not, like, having to do as much, you know? Right. When, like, it's all right there. You know, you just... Make your post, share it, tag it. You know, you gotta go that extra mile and pushing your show at least once a day, right? Or at least no one. And then you know, and then later you can look back and be like, oh wow, there's actual people. Here. Why is there people here? Because you promoted. Absolutely, and people need reminders. And I, my best suggestion, and I forgot to do it till earlier today, is to make the event on Facebook because when you click interested. It shows up in your events right, and gives you a reminder. Yeah. Hey, you know, and if you did get clear for this evening, you can be here. Right. So we only have two people watching us right now. Uh, <laughs> maybe. <Right. laughs> well, those two people are enjoying it, though. So I, I bet they are. <laughs> uh, and and it, it's it's okay Hi, because <laughs> people come uh, after the fact. That's why it goes to YouTube, and it stays there. Um. Uh, but it's uh, it's fun. It's uh, let's see, yeah. Do 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 do. We got one watching over on Twitch, and cool. uh, we got two over on YouTube. Oh, so that's three. That's one more than you said. So, and there's two that draw. two currently listening on Live 365 or other platforms. So that's cool. So we got five. And uh, one of them is, I don't know if it's a person or a business, but they're in Germany, and they've been listening for like the last eight or ten weeks. <laughs> That's really cool. There yeah, you go. definitely. So, uh, it's, it, and it's a lot of fun doing this. Um, I've been, I'm behind probably about 110, 115 songs on uh, new music shows. Uh, I will get to them, most definitely, but... Uh, uh, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you on stage? Craziest thing, and I, I have to go back to, you know, again, this place is called Grand Central Station, and fun factor or fun goofy thing I don't like to admit to a lot was there used to be a famous DJ back in the 80s and stuff, I mean, even in the 90s, uh, named Dave Pratt, uh, 98 KPD. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So Dave Pratt had the Sex Machine Band, and one of the things was <laughs> oh my God. that we would go in. The Sex Machine Band went through like three or four versions. We were the fourth one that they brought into us, and what we do, uh, and Dave would take songs like Sammy Hager's "I Can't Drive '55," and it was "I Can't Drive 1.0." It was like the new DUI law or something along the lines of that. So uh, we we're up there jamming. We do, uh, you know play events for that and be jamming out well one time we're at this big fest it was an october fest and i'm out there on a stage and there's thousands of people up there at this point i think i was pushing too many cheeseburgers because i was kind of <laughs> chunky in my freaking synthetic leather pants and i'm up there jamming and then all of a sudden they split oh no balls hanging out everywhere oh, my God. that was the craziest oh, thing that ever happened to me yeah so yeah that happened it was embarrassing <laughs> right there so yeah, that was an experience. So uh, how many days did you get after that? I was I I was with the girl at that particular point, so it wasn't too impressive. As you could tell, I was probably scared because they were, you know. But anyway, <laughs> uh, that's the best one yet. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing yeah. that. that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was an experience. Um, and uh, what's your favorite venue to play back then? And here in here in town, in uh, town. you know, it, so favorite venue was a place called Rockers, and only if you're local in Phoenix, it was the place. You know, you if a big band played out, at, you know, Compton Terrace or any of these big events or at the Veterans War Coliseum, they all ended up at Rockers afterwards. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was there at Sebastian Bach or Rob Halford or hell, I I, I could go on and on at the bands that would you know they play it and they'd come in there next thing you know they're jamming on stage with somebody so that was rockers that was my favorite all-time uh place 
And oddly enough, about four months ago, the owner I hadn't seen in probably 40 years ran into him. So that was kind of cool. But uh, that was my all-time favorite. Where was that? Uh, Cross streets wise, at least. I'm going to say 37th Avenue and Indian School. You know, okay. you go over the bridge on Indian School, just on the west side of that. Okay. Awesome. And uh, let's see. If you could play anywhere in the world, where would you play? You can help me with that. I mean, I mean, I um, for me, it'd be the, I think it's called TD Boston Garden. I, I would love to play there just because it's my, you know, it's my dad and his side of the family all come from Boston. I love Massachusetts. And um, I don't know, for me, that that's a, the, that place and Madison Square Garden. I know those are like really high, like I'm really reaching there. But um, I mean, those two places to me, that's like, I, I feel like if you play there, you've, you've made it. I, you know, honestly, I don't have the experience that he, that he does. You know, I I enjoy playing the big, like I would love to be on the huge stage at Bike Week. I did a lot of that stuff back in the 80s because KUPDs was, it was always doing the Oktoberfest. There's an inside soccer arena. I don't even know if it's there on 51st Avenue at Indian School called Pride Pavilion. We played there one time. It was a big indoor uh, arena. We played there. Uh, the whole who come off of by the airport they took that whole area and fenced it off there's all these cool places i like playing on the the bigger stage and open it up for the bigger bands i've opened up for tesla out at freaking big surf they put a big stage out there it's really cool to meet the guys in tesla it was a it was a great show uh but to sit there when you're in your 20s and or hell yeah i think i was still in my 20s and you know seeing your idols and the guys you you know that you know you you worship at that point when you're an early musician you like you know like it cracks me up all these people it's like oh my god i just touched george lynch's pick of his guitar i found it on the ground i killed 10 people and i got it <laughs> i used to be that way right so it was really you know it's it, one thing about getting older is all the excitement goes away you know uh but it was really cool to be out there stand on the side of the stage watching your heroes play and you could see why they were pros. You were over on the side of the stage. It was pretty cool. Absolutely. So what uh, if you could collaborate with anybody? Oh, I've said my Metallica. <laughs> That's my favorite band. So if I could just 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 ten minutes with James Hetfield, I'd be. I, I could die right there, and I'd be okay with it. Well, I'd like Kirk's job. I think I could do that. Would. Yeah. You heard me on that solo, that metallic one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Let's see. Um, what's your favorite song to play? Ooh. Oh. Right now? Yeah, we should, yeah. It's, it's an open question. It could be back then. It could be now. It could be both. You know, I like the Metallica that we play. Uh, we play Sabbath, Sabbath True, True Seek and Destroy. And, Seek and, Destroy. and wow. you know, we strike that first chord of Sabbath True and the way we've got it oh, dialed okay. in. I mean, you don't know how hard we've worked on our sound on these guitars because we have these monster rigs that when you go see Metallica, the same shit they're playing. As a matter of fact, my guitars are the same shit they play through. A lot of people say, oh, I can go to Guitar Center, I can buy... James Hetfield's ESP, you know, what's that Explorer shape one? Yeah, seven, eight grand. That ain't the one he plays. I've got those guitars. So I've spent a lot of time building that amp and trying to get that sound. So when we hit that first chord, uh, an A and sad but true, which is drop down a full step, it yeah. just like it kicks you right in the kitty. And I love the power of that song. Uh, believe it or not, I like the solo. Uh, you know, right now, what I, I'd say for me, I'm enjoying playing the uh, Metallica. I do get a little anxiety playing the Pantera. The solo... Uh, yeah, it's Dimebag, man. You know, he's yeah. not... It's a, yeah, I'm a note-for-note note kind of player. Yeah. You know, or right. let's give it that kind of feel. And uh, when I was learning that song with the other guitar player, he had played the wrong part. He didn't know the part. And so he was playing the wrong part during the solo. And I'm like... Oh my God, I'm calling my friends. I'm going to therapy. I go, <laughs> the timing is off. And and I mean, this went on for a month and I could not nail the song because I felt like the timing was off. I kept missing my mark and then rushing and screwing it up. 
then finally when we figured that out now i got this freak out thing and i'm gonna take xanax or something before we play that solo because every time it comes on hand start playing and you know what i could sit there and play that son of a bitch note for note every freaking time perfect and i've only got a good one here this last couple practices because i finally somebody's playing it right okay and, and uh you know i hold that i gotta tell you you want to you want to see a good goddamn show come there to see me hold the floor well, this guy goes, can we say go full retard? Is that offensive? I think, I, I think I, that guy's canceled, bro. Okay. Well, <laughs> well anyway. so uh, He goes full Tommy. Uh, he goes full <laughs> Tommy. Uh, no, it, 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 it's exciting for me to finally have someone else that I'm not babysitting because that's what I had to do in the other situation. In this situation, he's over there, and it's just like, Gee, how's he flipping his hair like that doing all the sweet picking and shit right you know so it's really kind of cool that you know and even like on the metallica you would not believe how many different guitars are going through that so now it's being covered from a to z you know the bridge for instance mm -hmm. and sad but true you know he's right. playing all the solos inside that thing i do the main one he you know he does the other ones but you know, like when we do Hell to King, I'm like, I'm looking over. Like, oh, you t you, yeah, that was my favorite. That's my favorite one to play, by the way. <laughs> Fred Sevenfold, Hell to the King. And for some reason, because I know it's not the most like exciting guitar-wise, but I love Keep Away by Godsmack. I just, yeah. I, every time, it, it was one of those songs, like, I forgot how cool and just badass yeah. that song was until, like, playing I'm like, oh, my God, just, ah. Like, I, yeah. I, I love that, because for, for me, I love that new metal, 2000s, you know, new metal. I just, I've always liked that. And like Godsmack to me was one of like the top, in my opinion, one of the top dogs in new metal. So jam and keep away is always a blast. Yeah, yeah, I love the I love the drumming in that. And our, oh yeah, you know, I, it, you're in for a damn treat though if you come out and see Victor, our drummer. I mean, kid is amazing. Uh, he's so diverse too. Mm -hmm. He'll look at me and go, he plays guitar, sings like a motherfucker too. I could say that right? Okay, sings like a mf'er. <laughs> plays drums better than anybody I've seen in the Valley. We're on the internet. We're not controlled by oh, the FCC. Okay. Well, fuck yeah. yeah then. <laughs> Pull my dick out right now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, hold on now. Hold on. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, no, uh, uh, Victor, our drummer, I mean, wow. I just, the kid is, I'd, I'd, I'd say, you know, everybody's got a lot of talent. This guy is just, all across he play guitar he can sing he can play drums and drummers see him play they're like wow because we're doing some stuff like the slipknot i think that's relatively hard on drums no i mean yeah, yeah anything anything by slipknot's gonna well, be tricky on drums yeah, yeah it's uh insane but yeah uh but no other favorites I, 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 funny is i like i like the duality song by slipknot it's a bitch awesome. to play right get the right feel in the right hand but it's just all these notes and if you miss one, you're screwed. But we got down. It sounds really cool. You know what songs are shocking that I shockingly like to play that I didn't think I would like? And God, I hope I don't get hate for this. Is the Pearl Jam stuff? Because I'm I'm actually not. Other than their first record, ten, I think it is their first album. I'm really not like a like a big Pearl Jam guy. But playing uh, what do we do? Even Flow and Jeremy, like playing those songs, I really have a blast. Because you just I just get to like just jam out, which is nice. But I love playing the Pearl Jam stuff, which is like shocking for me because I'm like not a huge fan. But I found like that happens a lot. Like in a lot of these songs, like I wasn't like a big fan of the, the certain bands, like Foo Fighters. I'm just not not into it. Oh, but playing it, I'm like, oh, this is like so much fun to play. We're uh, again, this is the genre of the younger guys in the band, and he what's a uh, what's the name of that song by Foo Fighters we're playing? Uh, learn, to learn to fly. Learn to fly. I had to learn that the day of our gig to our first gig where we lost the guitar but I had to, you had to throw that song in there you know and I'm like oh my god Foo Fighters I spent about it you know I never listened to it so my problem is memorizing the, the pattern of the song where it changes and stuff an hour later I'm skipping through the house <laughs> you know <laughs> singing the song I'm like I actually like this thing you know that's awesome oh wait till you hear us play Cruel Summer by Taylor uh, Swift <laughs> <laughs> Our singer did a great version to record it. It's I got to tell you, we got a lot of people that like that, but we rock it out, you know. Absolutely. So, um, what uh, what what do you do in your uh, in your downtime? Any other hobbies? 
Tommy does. That's, that's like the worst <laughs> question to ask me because I don't like. Well, I mean, you know, I got, I got, I got my family now, right? Um, I, you know, in the studio, but I, I mean, I think people know. Like one, uh, actually, tonight taking my my dad and my son to go see the new Godzilla Kong movie. Okay, which I'm Sweet. stoked for. But I've, I, a lot of people know, like, I'm obsessed with Godzilla. Unhealthy obsession. I even got the tattoo, and I'm obsessed with wrestling. So April, actually, here's what's cool. So next week, April for me is going to be like the the greatest like month ever, because I got my son's birthday on the third. Then I got my two shows. The fourth and fifth, and then that weekend I get WrestleMania, so I'm like counting down the days for this week to end, so I could just hurry up and get to April. So it's gonna be so sick. You gonna jump into April with uh, with the Godzilla Kong movie? So wow. I yeah yeah you can't beat that. <laughs> Which I hope it's good because I just saw Godzilla minus one not too long ago. That movie was epic. So this one better be good. I'm gonna be really mad if it's not. I'm going to blame you if it's not good. Yeah, well, it's you know, your fault. I see us playing a Blue Oyster Colt song called Godzilla in our future. <laughs> uh, I, if we, can we make that happen? I want that to happen. You know, for you, I will. Yes. Thank uh, you. <laughs> so I barely watch any TV. Uh, I'm one of those guys that's moving, shaking and baking and all the time. I'm not trying to make that. I just, uh, the guitar playing has really taken up a big hole in my life. Uh I'd retired from uh, professionally racing superbikes, the crotch rockets. Okay. And I've been looking for the last, God, maybe 10, 12 years to try to fill that hole. And so I got into the, I got the smart idea, and I won't shit normal for a decade after selling this boat. But we we were doing performance boating all over the country. You know, the ones in the, the cats, the carbon fiber cats that do 140 and 150. And we were doing that all over the country, but it was just such a debacle. And it didn't quite fill that need for speed. That I had, you know, when you're on a bike that's you're doing over 200 miles an hour in the banks of Daytona. Now, 140 miles an hour is fast on the water. It, it, it honestly, it's it's not that hard to do the boats, but the little stupid things will kill you. Absolutely. And so uh, it was fun, but it was just such a big debacle production. I'd have to drive 33 hours to Lake of the Ozarks and stay there for it was just a debacle. So uh, I was looking. That's where the band thing came in, and then I. I hadn't had any race bikes or anything like that, so I picked me up another race bike, and I'll probably go out there like the 7th of uh, April. I'll be out the track, go out there and lay some uh, laps down. But, yeah, doing that uh, and playing, and that's between that and, and I. my other hobby is I, uh, I had rebuild those old uh, GPZ Kawasaki's from the movie Top Gun. I've got three okay. of them. So that's nice. a matter of fact, I rode one over here, you know, so. <laughs> Very cool. Definitely showing your age. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, okay. You're a nine. Or you're an '80s uh, musician, and bringing it back in again. The differences between music then and now, because to be successful then is totally different than well, now. So I, I found out after I got off stage why I never made it big. Uh, and, or why I didn't even, even if I did have the opportunity to make it big and put myself in that situation, I never would have because I was writing music for the two musicians out in the audience. I was trying to be the George Lynch, John Sykes monster on guitar and not write the songs. And I, and I always ask people all the time, I go, what makes Van Halen, ACDC, and Bon Jovi, for instance, right? What makes them so big? What was the thing that made them so big? Well, they look cool. They Eddie's guitar playing or this, that. Like I go, no, that's not it. You can chant their songs. I go, you can be drunk as hell. Go back in black. You, people want to be able to sing the song because not everybody's a musician out there. Everybody wants to. When I see people doing this, or when I hear a new song, and that's the one thing we do a what's that? Pretty reckless song. Yeah. Maybe a handful full of people will know it, but it's one of those songs, the groove, you know. So I wasn't writing like that back then. I was writing to be the rocks, you know, the next Eddie Van Halen, which I never had a chance, at, you know. But I'm just saying, you know, I was writing music to impress the musicians and not thinking about the chant, the groove. So that's the difference between back then and now. Back then, feather figures, lots of pull offs, lots of hammer ons. Now, Lots of arpeggios, lots of this, and then also the rhythms of the music today. I mean, well, 
take Slipknot, for instance. Mother of Christ, I thought that was going to be an easy one. I'm like, ah, not a problem. I've been listening to that for 20 years. I went here, I'm like, okay, four notes here, two here, three here, two, four, here. It's, you know, going through the thing. So the right hand is the big thing that's changed a lot from the 80s for me. And, you know, the the palm beauty uh, and how they're doing that stuff and how the, you know, the mainly the uh, arpeggios and, you know, it's not necessarily sweet picking, which I can do that. It's just that right hand. And getting that right hand uh, muffling, the, you know, palm mute and stuff right, pinch harmonics. And this hand here, it comes easy. But the rest, that's the hardest part. It's way harder than the 80s ever was. I hear somebody do, when I see, when I, you know, God bless Eddie Van Halen, but I hear somebody do eruption. That's got to be the easiest thing to ever play compared to this stuff. Now, he was the pioneer, don't get me wrong. He's the God that started all this. But these guys, I mean, you go on the web now, you look at these kids, you're like, for Christ's sakes. This guy's, you, you know, you see, you know, like the one guy that does the stuff and he's beating on his freaking acoustic. Oh, and, yeah, oh. Crazy. yeah, yeah. It's like, how much, that guy must never get laid. <laughs> he's in there working on his guitar. How's he, does he get that good on it, you know? Right. And uh, that's just amazing to see the perspective of the differences between then and now. You know what I appreciate is you being an older musician and not like dogging on the modern music. Because a lot of like, you know, nothing against older musicians. A lot of older musicians like to kind of shit on the newer style of music because it wasn't like how it was back then or, oh, they have technology now. Uh, bad Coke habit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I used your counter back there. Uh, allergies. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I, I, I think that's actually really cool and I actually admire that, like that you don't like just shit on the modern music like you actually compliment it you know and and you welcome it which is a lot of older musicians tend to not do no Uh, I'll never I always tell the story I was playing at this bar and here we are we're ripping off White Snake we're docking we think we're acting just watch that movie Rockstar that was (laughs) Phoenix Arizona that's the only movie I will watch over and over again right down to the fluorescent flyers we were doing whoever did the back research on that movie is incredible that was phoenix arizona uh in the 80s i'll never forget we're at this bar it's called heydays it's on mcclintock and like we're the 202 you know the river bottom over there big surf in between there and i'm sitting there playing and we just got to strat i'm feeling really big and this one old codger comes up to me goes you suck really hendrix was the best and i'm like that was rock one too we're on like three, four, five, six right now. So I've always listened to, I've always been that old guy that likes the heavier stuff. I mean, I was listening to Slipknot in my trailer before I go out on a racetrack. You got to really realize road racing, these guys are drinking uh, coffee and tea with their pinky out. Here I'm in there banging my head to Slipknot. They thought I was crazy, but I like the new stuff. I like growing. I can't just sit there and listen to the same stuff over and over again. It's not that I think I'm better. Been there, done that, wore it out. I want to learn something. I got to keep learning. I'm not the best guitar player in the world, but I am the most persistent motherfucker, and I'll get it. One of those times. This guy, he looks at it. He's playing with his toes. I'm like, thanks, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Actually, I don't. Way to go, Tom. I don't know if I can do that or not. Like, I'm, <laughs> now I'm gonna go figure that out. <laughs> I, I I think personally, just for this band, you should cut your hair so everything's even. Yeah, that's not happening, bro. Plus, 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 my fiance would would legitimately kill me. Like. I, well, now thinking. you have the opportunity to come up with the foot guitar. There we go. I'm going to work on it. <laughs> Why do I feel like that's like a fetish somewhere, though? There is probably. I, it might be, yeah. <laughs> that's That just grossed me out. Now, now uh, I'm not going to do it. So I'm thanks, sorry. bro. I'm not, <laughs> no, you just ruined that idea for me now. So yeah, it got weird. It got really weird. I won't go home. Uh, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> just hold my hand. No, uh, no, no. You hold my hand. I'm kidding. <laughs> Wait a minute. We went from uh, foot guitar to holding hands. Wait a minute. You started this. I, I'm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally awesome. Uh, let's see. How long is your set when you play? Like two hours. Right. Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, you're gonna come out with blisters on your face. You know, I don't. I. Uh, I am very, very, very. I have an idea for what the sound I want. You know, and this is where I, I just feel these local bands are getting ripped off. They go in there and they, they play and they're changing over. All you're hearing is hi-hat snare. And then 
a lot of chorus on the guitar and you don't hear it it's just not mixed well and i feel that these poor guys are so tough I, I sit there i watch them playing the parts i see them doing everything right but coming out the main because they don't get that sound check i want it when our drummer hits his kick kicks the girls in a kitty when he hits a snare smacks you in a forehead and that just comes from those days of surgical steel and judas priest man i mean i've had rob halford in my garage i gotta find a cassette tape of him singing metal gods with my band um, <laughs> but you know you go out there and that's where i cut my teeth is, is watching you know surgical steel go out there and the drums was just like it was you could feel it in your body every time you hit the drums and uh you know that's that's how i feel about our, our sound what i want it to be that's why i talk so much about you know that first chord that we hit oh, yeah. in metallica i want it to just whoa and then uh i've also gotten it's kind of funny as we got a lot of remarks we had a lot of people come see the show because they wanted to see who had all that equipment on stage because it looked like a show it looked like a production right absolutely um that made me lose my place. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ha! Um, what's the best thing about being a musician for you? For him, me or him? You. That's actually I, hard. Question. I, you know what? I will. I will tell you this. Uh, I was so shitting myself, lifeless at the last gig that I get to fully embrace the part that I enjoy the most, which I did sporadically throughout the, the show. But, of course, I was having to do a lot of thinking because I was having to cover two guitars and change my playing for different parts that I was playing that he was playing. But, you know, when you're up there playing and everybody th everything's tight, everything sounds good, and you look out in the audience and they're standing at the front of the fucking stage, you know, First night, it wasn't like this, like the crowd kind of doing this from 10 foot back. Next next night, they were up on the stage with us and seeing all those people moving and grooving and singing the words to the songs and just having the best goddamn time. It was very, very, for me, I don't want to say powerful, but it was an incredible feeling to have that kind of energy and play and, and feel the music and also see it move people that's the most exciting thing for playing guitar i want to be able to see people it's not about impressing them it's not about look what i do it's not about this puts me up here no it's about i got energy with those people and we are all grooving and we're moving together it's it's almost like good sex you know why are oh. you touching me while you're doing it <laughs> no uh no it just it takes you know it takes two in that avenue or you know that's true, though. <laughs> you know, and same thing when you're playing. You know, when I uh, well, on that's that note, I'll step out. Yeah, you know, <laughs> please uh, don't leave. No, yeah, no. <laughs> we joke a lot. <laughs> we, uh, but well, you have to. Yeah, but uh, that's one thing. We laugh a lot. Uh, but you know, it, it's it's having that energy and that energy coming back. When I could do that, playing on stage, my whole band could do that. That's a great fucking night. That's a great night. Absolutely. You know? You gotta love that. You know? Then you always like to have that guy and a couple guys and the musicians back doing this. <laughs> you like, you know you're doing a good job then. Right. When they're yeah. taking when they're standing back and taking notice. Well, there was a, you know, uh it, it's I still have some people, you know, like like Steve, uh he plays with what, Color Chaos? Uh Steve, I, I'm old friend of mine. Okay. Uh, uh, Dave that uh, Burkai, I always call him Barcy, but he plays bass with Audi Paradox and Tim, the singer of Audi Paradox. I've known him since third grade. I got pictures of him loading my stage in back in the eighties. It's kind of funny, and so I still know some of the guys out there. But a lot of the guys that are playing right now, you know, I try to talk to them, and you know, I know some of them and stuff. They are like, yeah, okay, little Davey, we'll come see you play, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and, you know, uh, the show we did that night on a scale of one to 10, where I wanted to be, it was a 10. I'd say about six and a half, but it, it really it, it opened some eyes. And when this guy gets on stage, and when we, the way we're working now, I'm finally working as a band. I mean, literally, when we got on that stage last time and lost a guitar player, we were ending songs. There was, it was like, okay, done. It was like, all right, 
next one you know one of those now we're actually rehearsing to show the pattern and the flow and making the songs go and and when you look up there and i'll just say it, you see me playing pantera you see this guy playing the shit he's playing uh i mean there i'm there's and i've seen him there's great guitar players like like christian vasquez is that how his last yep. christian yeah, yeah. Yep. Like i love that guy's playing love that guy's playing uh you know i like him there's a horse He's a hell of a guitar. He could definitely, oh, definitely yeah. could Please. go all over. He's a monster, and I love I love seeing all those guys. But I've seen individual. But I got to tell you, I haven't seen. There's oh wait a minute, one group down in uh, Tucson, a girl I know that's a singer from Racing. Uh, her band called Iron Priestess. You should get them, and they're awesome. They got two guitar players that well pretty good, real good as a matter of fact. But with us up there, we're doing dual harmonies and, and the metallic. We got to do more and some of the other stuff. Uh, but you see the stuff we're playing I, there's not too many groups that have two guitar players like that and so I think that's going to be one of our strong points and uh, you know this this guy right and our singer and stuff it really like it, it, it put me in a fast lane you know for this band I'm, I'm excited real excited for the band awesome well that, that's it for me as far as questions go uh, thank you again Tommy for uh, bringing this up and oh yeah and uh, arranging this and thank you very much for coming we didn't have uh, Mr. Anthony Soto for uh, on lead vocals Mr. Victor Clark on drums and Mr. Scott Grimes on bass and but uh, uh, that's Menace Mary right oh. here in the Yeti Radio studio uh, check him out next week at the Roadhouse in Cave Creek I gotta give Scott Grimes a shout out our bass player Scotty is the rhythm guitar player for Audi Paradox, and he picked up playing bass just to play in a band with us. And he's bought guitar or bass stacks and all that, buying new stacks. And I got to tell you, best bass player I ever play with is a frustrated guitar player. And that dude wails on the bass. He does great. So <laughs> awesome. Uh, Scotty's awesome. Yeah. I've seen him play with, with Audi, so looking forward to seeing him on bass with you guys. Oh, he's, oh, yeah. he's great. He does a great job. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And uh, was it Thursday, Friday? Yep. Next week? Yep. Oh, yeah. The Roadhouse? Cave Creek. Yep. Cave Creek. And uh, check out their social medias uh, for uh, Menace Mary. And uh, check them out wherever you get the opportunity. They're also going to be at the 44 and uh, Starlight here on the West Side for all the West Side people. Yeah. West Side. It used to be the West Side was the only side back in the day. That's where all the bands were. That's where all the oh, good man, venues. That, that has really? changed dramatically. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's all East Valley now. Bro. Hell, I played that Rebel Lounge when it was Mason oh, Jar. It had yeah. a pole yep. right yep. in the middle of it. I've seen Bullet Boys in there. I mean, <laughs> I've seen Lynch Mob bad. in there. I mean, it's crazy. I, I, I think I even saw Sebastian Bach in there as well. Okay. Crazy. Awesome. We had a great place. So, um, the only the only bad thing is uh people think there's just more than me here and it's just me and i'm only one person so i get around as fast and as best as i can but uh definitely well, you're way for, the hell out here buddy i yeah. gotta tell you i i'm flying southwest next time <laughs> <laughs> well, was that alaskan just jump out the uh the plug yeah. when it pops out yeah <laughs> good god <laughs> bring a parachute <laughs> Well, thank you for having us. No, it's, absolutely. Uh, very, very flattering that you, you have us on. No, uh, nice. Hopefully we can, uh, you know, bring some more updates to you and, and maybe do a release of our first original, which I think is not going to be too far in advance because Jerk Off here is pretty much written. <laughs> I just, you know, look, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm the least talented son of a bitch in the band, okay? <laughs> the least talented uh, SOB in the band. But I got to tell you, my organizational skills. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is something you probably one up me on. I'm, 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 I'm not organized, right? Like I, I'm terrible <laughs> with that. I have to constantly check my calendar. Cause I'm like, wait, what's going on? Who's coming in today? What's happening? Oh, if, so, if my uh, wife did remind me, I would. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> thank God for calendars. Yeah, <laughs> digital ones at least. And I want to thank you for coming because it's, uh, you know. It's great to have a new band and uh, help get the word out. And you're going to come up with original music. That's amazing. We'll get you uh, on air uh, on the station because it streams 24-7 on Live 365 and uh, all the other 
internet radio platforms that I have on my listed on my website. But uh, definitely uh, set something up and uh, get you guys on there as well. And uh, I I'm excited, especially the the stuff I hear him write, and he is right into that vein that I was sitting there trying to adjust myself to, and he's he's got the slot filled. He he's got, I'm like wow, shoe fits, rock on. Yeah, absolutely. Tommy's great, and uh, uh, well, thank I you. Definitely look forward to uh, what you guys got coming in the future. But uh, thanks to Menace Marriott for coming into the studio, and uh, everybody have a wonderful evening. And uh, don't forget to check these guys out: Can I throw uh, Facebook, down? Instagram. No, and... I don't spike the mic. I thought no. Rocker. Oh no, we can't do that. <laughs> the only people that drop the mic are the assholes that have never paid for one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you again, and uh, have a great night. It's alive! The ...together and listen to the music. The Yeti. You're rocking with the Yeti. I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six-pack. The hairiest rocker on the planet. Yes! Can you dig it? The Yeti. Can you dig it? The Yeti. Can you dig it?